your Bibles to the 8th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 8. And I want to begin reading with verse 14. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. I'm going to tell you, when you come to know Jesus, that's a wonderful, that's the greatest miracle of all. But immediately following, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You must be filled with the Spirit. Verse 15, who when they were come, come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them. Right? Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Would you lift your hands? Ask God to help us in the name of Jesus. Father, as we bring this message on the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open every mind, every heart, bind every spirit of, of the darkness that would keep men from hearing the word of truth, change our lives, fill us, help us, I pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. And amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. In the beginning, God made man. God made him. Let me say this. When God made man... He made man in his image and in his likeness. You know that. God made man that way for one purpose. God wanted to have an entire family like his son. First John tells us, It doth not yet appear unto us what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We're told in the book of 1 Corinthians that as you behold him, you are changed into his image and into his likeness. The apostle Paul says that we are lively stones fitly framed together, making up a habitation of God by the Spirit. We're about ready to, to leave here. God has a better place prepared for us. But we know exactly what he made us for. We know exactly what he made us to be. And we know exactly what we're going to be when we get there. There are no mysteries. We are going to be exactly like Jesus. Not deity, but exactly like Christ. When God made man in the beginning, in the image of God made he him, male and female created he them. In his own likeness. But there, and I'm going to go through it, Many scriptures that lets us know that just the fact that God made them and just the fact that God walked with them did not mean that God did not have something further planned for them. Whatever God is going to do in you or you will let God do in you that he wants to do, every bit of it is going to be not by might, 
nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God the Holy Ghost is at work. There's nothing like the miracle of salvation born of the grace of God. Jesus as a man, there was no sin. He did not have to be born again. The father said, my son, I'm well pleased. Hear him. But in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, as the son of man, because Hebrews tells us he was both God and man, as the son of man, how that God anointed him with the Holy Ghost. He was filled in John and in Acts 10 with the Holy Spirit. I believe that when God made Adam and Eve, there was no sin. There was no tempter. There was no devil. But I don't believe that God was through with them. I don't believe they were going to float around in heaven with a sheet on their face doing nothing. The enabler, the caller, the supplier, the power, everything is to be found in the Holy Spirit. God created the heavens and the earth. It tells us that Jesus, that by him, through him, were all things made that was made. We also find that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They were there in the beginning. They were there in the making. They were there in the creating. You read in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 that a man is chosen by the Father. That's in verse 4. In verse 7, in whom we have redemption through the blood, Christ. In verse 13, we see there that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. In this great and mighty work of God, it wasn't finished with the creation. It wasn't finished just with God coming down, walking with men in the cool of the day. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's a mighty work. And I'm going to deal with that work of the Holy Spirit a little while here today. I know that in the creation Man in the likeness of God. Man falls from that place. But there is a divine work that God is working in us to get us back to what he said that he wanted in the beginning. He wanted a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. I just want you to think with me for just a moment. Do you think when God made Adam that Adam was going to be everything that God wanted him to be? I personally don't believe God makes anything bigger than himself. God did not Ask Adam any of his opinions on creating the heavens and the earth. This great God, he's got more planned for you and better things for you than you ever imagined. Now I can tell you how he's going to do it. Not by might or power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. God is working in us. But he works in us 
by and through the Holy Ghost. And let me just ask you to imagine with me for a little bit. Do you think that just the fact, and maybe I don't know, do you think that just the fact that Adam was created perfect in the image of God, do you think that means he knows every place he's supposed to go? He knows everything he must do. He must know every way that God would use him. I'm not so sure about that. It's the leadership of God that I believe was needed in Adam as much as it's needed in me. God, the great God, I believe that he was going to be the leader of Adam's life, the leader of Eve's life. I believe the fact that he come down and walked with him in the cool of the day does not mean that he's not going to visit, that he's not going to talk, that he's not going to lead by his spirit. I mean by that, that God, when he saved us, that wasn't the end. Even when God baptized you in the Holy Spirit, that was not the end. That paraclete of God, that God with us by the Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. Just because you talked in tongues is not the end of the life work of the Spirit in you. God, by the Holy Ghost, will burden your heart. God, by His leadership, will call you into ministry. Everything that we understand and everything that we do, we just know that it is all made possible by the work of God. How many of you are saved? Let me see your hand. It's not a loaded question. How many of you are saved? How many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit? That's not the end. That's not the end. The fact that you're born again means that you have power over sin. But you're going to have to walk in the Spirit of God to not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh. I'm telling you, we that are filled with the Spirit of God, we've just begun. We've just started. Because God will call us to be led by the Spirit. That means more than just walk around like some kind of a dummy, don't know where you're going. That means a leadership. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to preach this gospel. Paul said, woe is me if I don't. But I do know this. This book is for no private interpretation. If I'm going to be a preacher of the gospel, I've got to have the Holy Spirit working in me yes. to lead me into truth, yes. to convict me of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. If I'm going to preach, I'm not going to preach what you want to hear. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear out of me. I'm going to tell you what God the Holy Ghost speaks into this heart. And he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The deadness of the church is enough to drive you crazy. Death, formality, everything, except the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We don't hear from God anymore. We get it out of a book. We don't hear from God anymore. 
Somebody says something and we just take it and run with it. That's the reason there's so much sin in the church. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee, O God. Holy men of old wrote as they were moved on by the Spirit of God. This is not the words of a man. These are the words written down by a man as he heard the, the voice of the Spirit of God. Some people don't know how to live for God because they don't know the Word of God. Because they don't hear anything from God. But everything that we know is that there are possibilities God does not use your ability. God uses your availability. The possibilities are not in man's power, in his thinking, in his arrangements. The abilities of God is the only ability that is going to make any difference. I can tell you and you know that I don't watch the news anymore. But I was drawn to the news when five policemen were killed in Dallas. I've heard it from Pastor Clinton in all of my life. If you heal the church, you will heal the nations. What America needs is an old-fashioned Pentecostal outpouring of the Holy Ghost of God. We today tell a man, come accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is the most radical experience you'll ever have in your life. This is not some kind of a mental ascent that I'm going to accept Jesus as my Savior. Your Bible tells you, without godly sorrow, you will not repent. Where's that preacher of the gospel that'll stand up and preach to a man's sin? Cry aloud, spare not, show my people their sin. One thing we know, Jesus loves the sinner, but he took a whip and run them out of his house when they needed to be corrected. Cry aloud, spare not. If this nation is going to be healed, we're going to have to recognize the flesh, the carnality, the sin, the disobedience. That's what, we, that's what the world is full of. It's full of self. It's full of the flesh. Even the church has gotten away from travailing prayer, crying out to God, Seeking the face of God. It's every man doing what's right in his own eyes. If we're going to see a healing come to the nation, if we're going to see a healing come to the church, if we're going to see a move of God, it's not going to be in your organizational ability. It's going to be by the Spirit of Almighty God moving in your life, moving in your heart. We're going to have to cry out to God, asking Him to work in us. I'm not so sure that we do not need a new spiritual creation of God. Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Come into my life, oh God. Fill me with your spirit and make me that new creation that you said I was to be. Not the flesh patched over, 
not the flesh with a better attitude, but to be that new creation in Christ. When you're born again, you are a new creation. Old things pass away and all things become new. When the church is that and led by the Spirit of God, we're not trying to imitate the world. We're not trying to look like the world. Not to, trying to live like hell. We're trying to get closer to God and live like he wants us to live. God help us. We need a move of God. We need a move of the Holy Spirit. It says that they went down and laid their hands on them. And they received. When was the last time you said the good old fashioned Pentecost or the Holy Ghost service? In the book of Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 14, it said, Paul says that you may receive the promise of the Spirit. He wasn't praying about cars and airplanes. He's talking about the Spirit. I said to you in the very beginning, the purpose of God, even with Adam and Eve, was that he would have a family, that he's the father, and that they do what he wants them to do, goes where they want him to go. Knowing this, I believe it's always been the will of God, even Adam. I believe it was made to do the will of God. I believe it was made to look and to be like Jesus. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we'll be just like him. And I think it was to be done the same way it was done in Jesus in the 10th chapter of the book of John when he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you feel like I'm not giving any other way for it to be done, then I'm being successful. If you're getting that, then you're getting exactly what I'm trying to say. I don't have to, I don't have to repeat myself. We must be filled and led by and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. God has made no other way. So when God made you, James, made you, Hector, when God made you, he had a plan for you when he made you. Salvation is not that God was caught off guard and had to come up with a plan. Did you know the Bible says Jesus was a lamb slain from before the foundation of the world? He knew that man was going to sin when he made him. Slain from before the sins of the world. God wasn't caught off guard by the devil in the garden. He knew because God is omniscient. God knows everything. God knew when he walked in the cool of the day in that garden, when he said, you cannot eat of that forbidden tree, that fruit, he knew they were going to eat. Hello? You don't believe that? God knows everything. God's never had to learn everything because he's always known it. When he got in that garden and he said, Adam, wherefore art thou, Adam? He knew where he was. When he said, why are you wearing those fig leaves? He knew why he was wearing them. He knew, knew what he had done. But what God is doing today with a spirit-filled church is working toward what his original desire was, to have a family like his son, 
that's led by the Spirit. I hear people every now and then say, well, I'm going to heaven. I don't need that Holy Spirit. Let me tell you the facts. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is indisposable, indispensable. Somebody says, I don't believe that. I want you to listen to what I'm telling you. It's time to get back in that altar. Get back in that prayer room. Now, many of us haven't left it. Get in that place. Make no provision for the flesh. Crucify and mortify the deeds of the body. And cry out to be baptized in the Holy Spirit that we may walk in the Holy Ghost. You know why? He said, if you do, you won't fulfill the lust and desires of the flesh. That's the reason we're fulfilling the lust and desires of the flesh. We're not filled with the Spirit. You know, Jesus told his disciples, he said, when you're brought before the magistrates and all this, he said, don't think of what you're going to say. You know, there's little handbooks made to tell you what to say if you run into this, run into that, run into something else. He said, the Spirit of God will give you what you need to say. Now, they may have figured it out in that book and given a good argument. But there's no man with a natural mind that can argue with a devil. You didn't get it. That's the reason you need the mind of Christ. You need to think the thoughts of God. We don't do what we want to do. Our lives are hid with God in Christ. We're led by the Spirit. We walk in the Holy Ghost. I've seen so many people when they come, when they get convicted or God moves on them or whatever, when they go to the altar, the first thing they got to do is repent. First thing they got to do is ask God to forgive them. First thing they got to do is, oh God, I, I didn't mean to do that. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh. You will not. I'm not saying we're perfect, but we do have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and we can repent. But I want to tell you, I told you this a long time ago, church was full. I preached on sin. Man and his wife come and stood right here in front of me. Man said, I guess you believe that a man has to sin every day. I said, no. He said, well, I do. I believe a man has to sin every day. I said, really? Do you get to pick your sin? If you have to, if it's unavoidable, if you say that you have to sin, Show me that in the book. In the book of Romans, he said, I'll give you power. I can show you where he said, sin shall not have dominion over you. He said, well, I can't argue with you, but I still believe it. Don't walk out of this church after hearing me tell you to walk in the spirit that you uncontrollably undeniably have to commit a sin.
God said, I give you power over all the power of the devil. I give you power. You don't have to sin. Now, if you do sin, go to the Father, Jesus Christ, and be forgiven. But you don't have to. Somebody said, well, I got mad the other day. I guess that's a sin. God said, be angry and sin not. It's just the fact that you got mad doesn't mean that you sinned. Second, I mean, the second chapter, yes, of 1 Corinthians, verse 11, says, The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Tell me you don't need the Spirit of God? No man knoweth the things of God but the Spirit of God. That's not debatable. That's not a point of argument. That is the statement of the divine word of God Almighty. I was thinking yesterday at home in the office of how many different Bibles, versions of the Bible, translations of the Bible there are. You can get one that's made for women. Woman's Bible. You can get one that's this version, that version, this interpretation, that interpretation. I'm content with one I have. The King James Version. There's something a man today that most of the time when they want a different translation they're looking for something that will justify them in the way they're wanting to live thank you I said something last week about the Pope of Rome some people were talking to me this week about some of the things I believe it was you some of the things the Pope is doing and saying. There is a natural man, and that natural man can be religious. But there is a man that's filled with the Spirit of God. And that man that's filled with the Spirit of God will not grieve that Spirit. He will not sin against that spirit. He will walk pleasing. He will walk satisfying in the life of, that he lives with God. The one thing that we know is that the only way to know the things of God is to be filled with the spirit. Do you know in your Bible it says you have need that no man teach you? That doesn't mean teaching in the interpretation by the Holy Spirit. You don't need anybody to teach you. Hello? Now if you want to follow Joel Osteen, go ahead. But he'll tell you he does not even know if Allah is God or Jehovah is God. If that's, what, if that's what you want to follow. The Bible says many voices in the air and none of them are without signification. But there is a voice that is of the Spirit of God. Hear it, listen to it, follow it, obey it. As soon as they found out the Samaritans had heard and believed the gospel, they sent the two men down to lay hands on them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. God the Spirit 
is in us, he will urge us. He will direct us. He will instruct us. He will do everything. Somebody says, what does that leave for me to do? Obey. What does that leave for me to do? Am I, am I supposed to be that I don't use my mind? You're to use the mind of Christ. We are living in perilous, perilous times. I'm going to close with a few more thoughts. They've got to set up for their kids' crusade that starts tonight. Have to go eat, come back, do a lot of work. I'm going to tell you. Unless you mortify the deeds of the body, you're going to die. If you live according to the flesh, you're going to perish. Do you know what the works of the flesh are? Adultery, fornication. They're all listed there in the book of Galatians, Colossians. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. But then we're told what the operation, the works of the Spirit are. If you do this, you shall live. It's not the works of the flesh. It's not the works of the spirit trying to be done by the works of the flesh. It is death. Death to that old man. Death. Paul said, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Who was it? I can never remember. Was it Finney? Man went and knocked on his door. He opened the door. He said, I'd like to see Mr. Finney. He said, Mr. Finney doesn't live here. He said, I was given this address. He said, he doesn't live here. He said, who lives here? He said, Jesus. Now, that may be, in a way, not fully understood by all of us, but I understand what he was saying. I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. God baptizes. I believe, I just believe somehow, that for God's purpose and God's will, and God's way and the fulfillment of God's plan, I believe that Adam and Eve would have been filled with the Spirit. I read to you in the book of Corinthians, you cannot know the ways of God but by the Spirit. We need a revival. We need a spirit of reviving We need it in our homes. We need it in our youth. We need it in our children. We're a needy people. But I can tell you where it begins. It begins with that confession, that repentance. It begins with that heart being made right with God. It begins by being filled with the Spirit. It begins in the same place that it started in the beginning. Hello? Those in that upper room, 10 days, we can't wait 10 minutes in prayer. They waited 10 days. It took 10 days to get that griping, murmuring, the works of the flesh. Who's the, can my child be the greatest? Took 10 days confessing and repenting, getting all that out. 
so that suddenly there could come a sound of God out of heaven. And from then on, they did not count the things that they owned as theirs, but had all things common. Took them 10 days to get prayed through to where God could get to them with the spirit that he wanted them to have. They walked the streets while the musicians come. They walked the streets and their shadow healed the people. Was it Peter's shadow? Absolutely not. Jesus had to rebuke Peter and call him a devil. But when he was full of the Holy Ghost, God in him, by the Holy Spirit, was the difference. I want you to stand with me, please.